This is the Fraunhofer Center at the University of Connecticut. And this is Gen 2 of our emergency ventilator device. And I'll show you Generation 1 and some of the problems. So here's Generation 1. Uh, there was some, some kind of crude uh, counterweights here to balance this lever arm. And so there's some, I'll show you the improvements on the next design. And so here's our Ambu bag. This ran for about five days straight. And there's quite a bit of uh, abrasion. Uh, there's some rough edges here. And we had some, some uh, tubing that we cut and we put it on there. There's also a rough edge here on the lever arm. And you can see the damage that was occurring here. So we addressed that uh, in this new version. And uh, also while we're here, this is an artificial lung here. There's a bag with weight inside of it. So this is a vacuum sealing bag. So we have a vacuum seal bag with about one and a half kilograms of uh, metal in it so that it sinks to the bottom. And then we have this water column. Once we get a little bit of air in the uh, lung, the water level is ranging in, in this area right here. So we can get an accurate measurement on our tidal volume. And the water column provides pressure to push the uh, air back out of the lung. And over here, so the last video we made, we did not have peep valves, so now we have a peep valve that's adjustable. And it, uh, this is adjustable in the range of like 8 to 20 centimeters of H2O. So that's a nice addition. The other changes are, so one, now it's all made out of aluminum, much more rugged. And here, the cam is riding on a ball bearing, and it actually has O-rings on it. There's O-rings right here. Sorry, there are O-rings right here where my finger is. We also made uh, this shaft where the, the roller bearing is. It's actually adjustable. So we could have additional uh, tidal volume changes by adjusting that lever. And let's see, what else do we have? So instead of the counterweights here, we have a surgical tubing on the back that's pulling down. Instead of on the other one, we had springs pulling up. And I guess probably most importantly, we have a nice beveled edge here. So, and the same thing on the lever arm, has a nice beveled edge on that. And so we've reduced, or actually eliminated, this has been running for 24 hours, and we've had uh, no abrasion with this, with this setup. I must say we have, we have an identical motor on this system. I should, well, it's identical motor uh, number for the identical vehicle, but it is actually quite different. The, uh, we, have a, we have a same speed controller, but the same uh, percentage voltage is putting out different, uh, different rotations, different, different number of rotations. So I don't think this, you really should try to get, if you're going to run, but build a bunch of systems, you should really try to get identical motors from the same exact manufacturer. So, again, a little bit of data here. So, right now we're running um, at 20 breaths per minute. Uh, peep is at about 8 or 9. And max pressure is peaking up at about 36, 37. So, here's another lung that I have. And again, there's a, a vacuum seal bag in this. And uh, there's a lot of weight in it, so it stays at the bottom. And so we've marked off our graduations here so fairly accurately so we can measure plus or minus 25 milliliters, I think, and get a fairly accurate tidal volume. Uh, I don't... Some discussions with uh, medical personnel indicates that they would really like to be able to run up to, surprisingly, up to like 60 centimeters of H2O uh, pressure in the lungs. So... Uh, we can't actually do that with this lung. We have problems with it, so we're thinking about other ideas for uh, building additional lungs. But so that's the status, and tune in next week.